Hey, what's going on, family? You guys already know what day it is. Yes, it is the day after Sunday. Welcome to another episode of Eat Up Mondays with your boy Trevor Pope. Listen, I pray you guys had an awesome weekend. I had a great weekend, you know, basically worked, um, but still God is good. Got some time to hang out, you know, at the house, you know, with the family, with the kids. You know, my wife was working also. So we've been a little busy this past weekend, but still God is good. Feeling energized, feeling great. Listen, I want to jump right into this meal. Uh, so without further ado, I'm sure you guys are ready. I'm ready. You're hungry. I'm hungry. So let's dig in. I really didn't want to prolong this. Um, if you guys listen to last week's episode, we talked about how God loves us. And I wanted to encourage you guys to be reminded that God loves you. And pretty much we're keeping that same theme this week. I want to share a scripture with you and it, and it, and it bleeds. It, it speaks. God loves you. It screams. God loves you. And one of the reasons why I wanted to share this scripture is because of something that I heard a well-known preacher say a couple of days ago, it was posted online. It was very disheartening and very unfortunate. I was thinking about sharing what he said at the end of our meal, but you know what? I'm going to share it now and then just read the scripture and just, just show you how much God loves you and just show you how, if you're not careful, how people can try to get over on you, but all you got to do is stick to the word. All you got to do is research behind the stuff that people are saying. And a lot of times you'll find, even though they're super popular, even though they seem to have everything you may want, you know, when it comes to houses, cars, and all these things, and that's how they pretty much lure people in and get people to follow them because they promise them all of these things they have. And people just don't realize that they're getting a lot of these things because of what, you know, you are giving them, you know, that you probably shouldn't be giving them because they're not taking these things with the right motives. But this preacher, and we're not going to say his name because this isn't personal. So I don't, I don't want to say his name. Um, but just, you know, watching this video, I shared it with a couple of brothers that I, I talk a lot about the word with, and, and, you know, it just was amazing that it was almost like they were having like one of those telethons. If you ever watch TBN or any of those channels, you see the telethons with the people in the back on the phones. And he says something, he said that he believed that Jesus hasn't come yet because people aren't giving the way that God wants them to give. And, you know, he starts going into all these stories, you know, he went into a story where, and because a lot of these guys, you know, when they get on different programs or when they're being interviewed, sometimes people will question them about the finances they have and some of the luxury items they have. So I guess somebody was interviewing him and they were like, listen, you're a millionaire. And he was like, no, no, this is what he was saying out of his own mouth that he said to the guy, no, no, you got it wrong. And the guy was like, yes, you are. You're a millionaire. He said, no, I'm multi, I'm a multi-millionaire. And then he says right after that, that, you know, you know, basically either he said to the guy or he said to himself that he'll mess around and buy the station and fire him. You know, and everybody starts laughing and, you know, cheering, you know, the usual stuff. And then he goes into, you know, this whole thing about, you know, do I own a jet? Yes, I own a jet. But as soon as I'm raptured up, you can have it because I'm going to heaven. Just all of these things. But, you know, when he said that he believes that, you know, if if we give right or, or if we give to whatever it is that they were doing, that God would say, Jesus, go get him right now. I thought that was just so sad and unfortunate. And I wanted to read this scripture to not only to to show you how crazy that was, you know, what he had said, but also to show you how much God loves us and why the Lord has not returned. Second Peter chapter three, and we're going to start in the first verse. It reads as follows. It says this second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance, that ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior. Knowing this first, and, and if you notice, 
with a lot of scriptures, they always say knowing this or knowing that. And we know that all things work together. Listen, family, this is a knowing way. You have to know and be sure that Jesus Christ is Lord, that everything that is in in his word is a hundred percent fact and it is coming straight for him. But listen to what they say, knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lust. Listen to what a scoffer is, a person who mocks or makes fun of someone or something, often of religion or moral value. So basically, these are individuals that are making fun of our faith. And how much do we have of that right now in these last and evil times? People mock you know, the Lord Jesus, like never before, there isn't any other religion on the planet that you hear more jokes about, that you see more skits about online than Christianity. But it says that in the last day, scoffers walking after their own lust and saying, verse four, where is the promise of his coming? How much do we hear that? Oh, you guys have been waiting for Jesus a long time. Where is he at? You know, um, I haven't seen him yet. You got this preacher talking about if we pay him enough or if we if we give enough, you know, he'll he'll appear right away that the Lord is sending him right away. But it says in saying, where is the promise of his coming? We hear it all the time, guys. We hear it on TV. We hear it from people that have walked away from the church. Oh, we've been, been believing this a long time. We've been talking about being in the last days for thousands of years. But listen to what the scripture goes on to say. For since the fathers fell asleep, this is them talking. Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. We hear that all the time. Everything is still the same. Nothing has changed. We don't see the Lord doing anything. He hasn't come back. Verse five, for this, they willingly, for this, they willingly are ignorant of that word willingly, willingly there means absolutely. They are absolutely, this is something they are absolutely ignorant of, gladly ignorant of that by the word of God, the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perish. But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. And what Peter is saying here is, listen, the word has not changed. The same word that spoke everything into existence, the same word that God used to speak everything to it, it into existence, which we know that is the Lord Jesus. When we look in the book of John, it talks about how the Lord, the word created everything that we see. So he says, the same word that created everything that we see, even the world that was here and we know that was washed away with Jonah. He says, listen, the same word is the same person, the Lord Jesus, that is keeping everything in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. Verse eight, it says, but beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing. He says, listen, don't be ignorant and see if we knew these scriptures right here. If some of those people that were at this telethon and listening to this preacher or watching this preacher that, you know, believe what he was saying, if they knew this scripture, then he would not have been able to get over on them with what he said. It says, but beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. So what is the scripture saying? that God does not look at time the same way we look at time. If you remember, even in Exodus 32, remember when Moses was up on the mountain, the children of Israel was talking about, why is he taking so long? Let's make this gold calf. Let's find a new leader. Let's, let's do something different. And when God saw what they were doing, remember what he said to Moses? He said, go, the people have turned aside from me quickly. God looked at it as, as if they turned quickly, but to them, God was taking too long. God's timing is not the same as our timing. But the scripture goes on to say, verse nine, and this is where it was such it was so hurtful to hear this preacher say this because this is the reason why God has not sent the word back, the word of God, his son, Jesus. It says the Lord is not slack 
concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, like this preacher and some of those that are outside of the faith. And this preacher sound like sounds like he is outside of the faith for even saying that. It says the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to who? To us word, not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance. So what is these what is this scripture saying? It is saying the reason why God has not sent the Lord Jesus back is because he loves us so much that he does not want to see any one perish. Listen, we're not going to be able to pay him to send Jesus back quickly or too soon because there's some people that God, and it may be you listening to the sound of my voice, there's some people that God does not want to see perish. And because he loves you so much, he says, listen, I am long suffering. I'm willing to wait on you. I love you. I sent my son for this purpose so that you can live for eternity so that you can have everlasting life in me. The thing that they're jeering at God about and making fun of, you know, what we believe in in our faith, they don't realize what they're making fun of is really God's love. It's not because God is slacking his promise. It's not because it's not going to happen, but it's because those same individuals that are making fun, God says, listen, I'm really giving you an opportunity to get right with me, to make Jesus your Lord and Savior, to repent and say, Lord, please forgive me for everything I've done, everything I said. I believe in you. I see that the world is dying, just like you said in your word. And I know that you will eventually come back. And I want to make sure that I am right with you when you do. Listen, God loves you. And that's why he has not sent his son back yet. But guess what? There is going to be a day and time when the Lord Jesus will return. And guess what? You're not going to be able to pay him to return any sooner. And you're not going to be able to pay to be with him if you are not with him now. Make Jesus your Lord and Savior. If you're struggling in your faith and you're struggling with different things in your life, repent right now. Ask the Lord to forgive you and ask Ask him to give you the strength to walk in his word, to give you the strength to do what it is that he has called you to do. Listen, time is winding up. Yes, when we read all through the scriptures, that that's what they were constantly talking about, how these were the end times. But if you think about it, it was the end times then because any day you can die. So at any given point, it can be the end for you. It can be over for you. It can be no more chances for you. It doesn't have to be just when the Lord returns. If you die tomorrow, that was your last day. That was God calling you home. So it is very important to treat this life day by day by day as the possibility of it being your last. And what do I mean by that? Is standing firm in the Lord, being humble in the Lord, asking the Lord to help you to navigate through this life, this wicked system, this wicked world, help us to maintain and not get caught up and and, and become one or abide in the world. Because guess what? When the world dies, those that are abiding in it, and that word abide means to remain, they will remain with it and die with it. That's why the Lord says, he that abides in me shall live forever. Listen, I pray that this encourage you guys. Listen, stop letting people tell you anything and get over on you. This life, this journey is not about money. Is is money in itself evil? No, money doesn't bother anybody. Money is just a tool. And if you have it, then God bless you. If God has blessed you with some money, then God bless you. But don't make it your God. It is just a tool. Don't make it everything. If you can share it with somebody, if you got money out there and you can be a blessing to somebody that's starving and hungry and need groceries, do that because you cannot take it with you. We have to stop allowing these individuals, guys, to get over on us and to use us to live these extravagant lives styles here that they don't understand. You can't take that with you anyway. So what's the whole point of it? What's the point of trying to hoard all of this stuff to yourself when there's so many people out here starving and in need, even right in their churches is people that don't halfway have groceries that if everybody would just put a few dollars up together, everybody would be able to have groceries in the sanctuary. But listen, I don't want to keep going on and on because I'm very passionate about this. It hurts me to see people 
you know, being taken advantage of and, and to hear them celebrating things like this and just kind of ignorantly, you know, cheering these things on and then probably reaching right down in their purse, right down in their wallet, giving all that they can because of these false promises. Listen, God has promised you that he is going to return, that he is not being slack in his promise, like some say, but that he will return at the right time. And prayerfully, you will have made the right choice when he does. Know that I love you guys. And until the next time we share a beautiful spiritual meal together, Shalom.